what's the best way to deal with anger? Should you vent it? Should you express your anger? Or should you, you know, bottle it up? And there's a sense that you shouldn't bottle it up. Um, but on the other hand, expressing it overtly uh, too much, being free to, to express your anger um, in an unchecked way is probably not very strategic. And in fact, studies show that, you know, really what you want to do is find out what's driving your frustration, figure out what's preventing you from achieving the goals that you want to achieve. And fundamentally, anger, frustration, those are indicators of lack of progress towards your goals. And so ultimately, you just have to see what are my goals, what's preventing me from getting them, and how can I reorient or adapt to the current situation so that I'm not having this kind of pent up frustration. In a lot of cases, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to actually overcome some barriers, at least not in the short term. So you may have some uh, need to actually kind of have that metacognitive acceptance mindfulness, recognition that, you know, you're not always going to get what you want. Uh, and, you, you know, you need to, to, to be adaptive and to think about other ways, creative ways of getting around your frustrations. There's a lot of research on how to deal with stress in the modern world. Stress is mostly kind of a psychological construct. Uh, there are a lot of environmental stressors. Everybody who, who experiences stress can uh, take steps to mitigate against the effects of stress. And one of the most important things is exercise that engages positive metabolic pathways. Um, it's hard because, you know, to get motivated to exert effort, um, that's something that's difficult to do when you're feeling stress. But it is one of those things, if you can somehow convince yourself, it does re re release natural endorphins. It has a kind of positive overall halo around it compared to the kind of stressful feeling. And it also increases your sense of efficacy. Getting outside, changing the context, uh, experiencing uh, some, you know, new perspective, uh, meditation, you know, thinking about the larger picture. So trying to contextualize what it is that's stressing you out and, and, and kind of also, again, as with anger, trying to figure out what it is that is stressing you out and then, you know, deal with that in, a, in, a, in the best way possible. So I find uh, sometimes I'm not really aware, but I'm really stressed about some deadline or something. And I think to myself, well, what if I just actually did that now instead of continuing to stress about it? Hmm, that's probably a pretty good idea. And of course, all those considerations that we talked about with procrastination are real barriers. But again, if you're aware of those forces, you can be kind of able to cognitively manipulate yourself and basically say, look, I know this is my brain telling me it should do all these other things because it's going to be a commitment. But look, if I want to get rid of my stress, I'm just going to do this thing and then think how good I'll feel. Okay. Um, so really these are hard things to do. Uh, everybody can, it's easy to give this advice like, yeah, just go exercise. Right. Um, but it really does work. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, if you can build up habits that, that support these kinds of things, um, these really do, uh, have good benefits. And this is another important phenomenology with, with stress. Um, a lot of people think that if you're under stress, you're going to get sick. Um, and it turns out that stress is actually an adaptive response, uh, to adversity. And it, it actually produces kind of more metabolic activity towards fighting off, uh, uh, you know, infection and stuff like that. And so in fact, uh, you, you are less likely to get sick during a period of stress, but then after that point, it, once the stressor is removed, you have this kind of falling off period, uh, and you've built, you've used up all these resources when you're kind of battling, uh, against this kind of stressful situation. And it's really after the stressor uh, is removed that you get more susceptible to infection and getting sick and stuff like that. So there are uh, effects of uh, stressful events on uh, a susceptibility to infection. Um, but a lot of these things are, are such that you, you tend to get sick after the stressor is passed. Or, you know, if it's an ongoing thing after your system is kind of worn down to the point. Uh, where it's no longer effectively fighting against the, the stressor. So you better be careful, <laughs> you know, when the semester is over, the quarter is over, uh, take extra caution uh, against getting exposed to, to viruses, et cetera. 
um, because that's when you'll be more susceptible after the stress has passed. And I know a lot of personal experiences like this from me and, and, and friends where this has happened and that it, it really does make sense.